Creating a consistent character in Design lets you create the character once and then use that character in images you generate by referencing the character. And you can also reference your character and place them in an existing image. We're going to look at the ways you can create a consistent character in Design and a few ways you can use your consistent character. And by the way, I marked this video with that includes paid promotion tag because Design gave me access to their platform to try it out. We're logged into Design, we're on the main page, and we can get to consistent characters by clicking this big consistent character button right in the middle of the main page. You can also get here inside any project by coming over to the left and clicking on this character button. Choosing the big consistent character button from the main page just created a blank project for us and started us out on the character tab. The first thing to do here is choose a character. Don't worry if you don't have one yet. When we click choose a character, we have options to pick from a preset character, one that we've already created, or build our own character. And that's what we'll do here. We'll click build your character. There's two ways to build a character in design. You can start with a text description, or if you have one or more images already that you want to turn into a character, you can start with images. First, let's start with a description. I'll just click that big button. First, we need to give our character a name, and we will be using this name later in our prompts to reference the character to let the AI know that we want that character in the image. I'm going to call this character Fred. Next, we need to describe our character. We want to tell it things that we want to stay consistent about this character from one generation to the next. For this character, I'm going to say an eccentric old man with white hair wearing a three-piece suit and a top hat. You have the option to add a reference face. If you have an image of someone whose face you want to be this character's face, you can drag that and drop it right here. Next, you need to select a style for your character. There's a handful of styles to pick from here, cartoon, anime, and realistic, but you can also click this view all styles button, and then you've got a whole lot more styles to pick from. I'm going to try design realistic V3, and then we'll click generate character. This is just going to create a few preview image sets for us. It's not going to actually create the character yet until we're happy with what the preview looks like. It's got a few options here. We can either click on either one of these to choose them, or we can click the little magnifying glass to zoom in and see it bigger. Here's our first one. This guy is actually looking pretty good. I like him. All right, let's close that and take a look at our other alternative. And this one's looking good as well. I think I'm going to go with the first option, but if I didn't like either of these, I could click this back button and either change the prompt of how I describe my character or change the style, pick one of the other models to generate from. But I'm good with this, so I'm going to say start training. Our character is being built and it says it's going to take, what, about 20 minutes. All right, our character is ready, so we're going to click the Use in Consistent Character button. Over on the left, notice that we have two prompts here. We have a character description and we have the character action and scene. The character description is just what it says. It's describing what our character looks like. This is the description the AI came up with for our character, and we can make some changes to this when we're generating with it if we need to dial it in a little bit. Now, this second box, the character action and scene, this is where we describe how we want the character to appear in the scene, what we want them to be doing and it's automatically put the character tag in there for us, the at Fred. We named our character Fred, so at Fred is how we tell it we want to use this character in the scene and what we want him to be doing. They give us a few little presets down here, like walk, read, wave. If we click walk, for instance, it'll say Fred walking in the park, sunlight filters through the trees, adding to the calm atmosphere all around. And if we want some more ideas for what to do with Fred, we can click this little make a change, and now it gives us sit, laugh, or dance. Let's stick with that walking prompt and come down here to the camera settings. When we click on this, we've got options for both the character direction, auto lets the AI decide how the character should be facing, or we can tell it we want a front view, a back view, a left view, or a right view. Then for the camera shot, we can leave that on auto, or we can tell it we want a close up, we just want the upper body, we want a full body, or we want a wide shot. I'm going to leave both of those on auto, but it's nice to know those options are there for when you're trying to get something really specific. Next, you can choose your aspect ratio, or you can leave it set on canvas, which will make the image the same size as the canvas over here on the right. For generation mode, we're going to stay on normal, which won't be quite as fast as fast, but it'll be better quality. The only option under advanced is if you want to use a specific seed, which we do not, so I'll come down here and click generate. You can see over on the right it says starting, it's working on it, and while that's running, let's start another one. I'll get rid of the prompt that's in there. Let's try Fred sitting. And that creates a prompt for him sitting by the window, looking out at the rain. We'll go ahead and generate that. And let's do one of Fred dancing on the stage. Why not? Now, you don't have to use these preset prompts. You can type anything in there you want. 
just make sure you tag your character. So let's say Fred, standing on a street corner in a modern city, and we'll hit generate on that. And let's go see what we've got, starting with Fred walking in the park. And there we have Fred walking away from us in both of these iterations. If we like what we got going on here, but we wanted Fred facing us, we can come up here and click information. It'll give us the prompt. We can say copy, bring that over here on the left to the prompt box for the character action and scene. We'll paste in that prompt. And notice that pasted in my character description and the action and scene. So let's get rid of all this character description and get rid of this extra Fred comma. We'll just delete that out. Now we're back to that original prompt. We'll use the camera setting this time. And for the character direction, we'll say front view. Close that out and generate. And let's look at some of these other images that we created. Here's Fred looking out the window with rain. The second variation of Fred looking out the window at the rain. Now these are a little different. This iteration has the beard going on and this iteration does not. Looking back at the character sheets we used, I think we chose this first one and he sure enough does have a beard there. So if we wanna make sure we're getting that beard in our generations, we might wanna come up to this character description and add in there with a white beard. Now let's see what else we got. We've got Fred dancing on stage. Oh, he's got the white beard there, the brown suit, the top hat. The other variation of that one, Fred's looking pretty spry, dancing there on stage. Here's the prompt I wrote of him standing on a street corner. I wouldn't exactly call that a corner. Looks kind of like he's sort of in the middle of the street, but okay. And the second variation of that one, he's near a corner in this one, but I'm not quite sure what this traffic pattern is they got going on. Now here's the one we redid where we had him in the park, but he was facing away from us and we set the camera to have front view and sure enough, Fred is facing us. I think Fred has some extra fingers going on there. Let's check this one. Those hands are a little better, but it's changed his suit up a little bit. To keep that from happening, we might want to also add in our character description up here, instead of a dark brown suit, maybe a dark brown three-piece suit or suit and vest. Now there's a whole bunch of options underneath each of these generations. You have variation, insert character, AI editor, AI video, lip sync, expression edit, face swap, enhance, and upscale. And these one and two buttons are just corresponding to image number one or image number two above. So if I wanted to enhance and upscale this image on the right, I would just come down here and click the number two under enhance and upscale. If I wanted to enhance and upscale the one on the left, I click the number one. You can also double click any image and place it on your canvas. And then you have all the tools across the top that you can use to work with this image that's on your canvas. So that's how we can create a character from text, just describing the character that we wanna create. But we can also create a character from images if we already have images of our subject. To use images to create your character, start off the same way by clicking this big consistent character button on the center of the main screen. Up on the top left, click choose a character and then build your character instead of selecting start with the description select start with images and there's actually fewer steps here we just need to give our character a name and then upload anywhere from 1 to 30 images the minimum size is 200 by 200 pixels and you want to use images that have a clear face full body shots are good especially if you're going to be generating full body shots of your character but it's not absolutely required and they recommend good quality high resolution images now i've already created a character named bob using these images they're not particularly great they do have a clear face view and they're not all fuzzy once i drag dragged them into here. I just clicked that start training button and about 20 minutes later, my Bob character was ready to go. So to create with that character, I'm just gonna open up this blank project that I have. I'll come over to the left and click the character button. It has Fred selected, I guess, because that's the last one we used. We'll go ahead and close that out. We're gonna click generate images with your character and then choose a character and we'll choose Bob. It puts in the character description of me and it starts the prompt off with at Bob. And I think I feel like being a chef today. So we're gonna say Bob is a chef expertly flipping food in a busy kitchen. We'll hit generate on that. And let's also try Bob hiking through a snowy mountain pass with a breathtaking vista in the background. Generate. Here I am in the kitchen. Boy, I look grumpy and I don't seem to be flipping anything, but I must say it does look like me. The other variation that looks like a fairly accurate depiction of me, again, doesn't look like I'm quite flipping anything. That food seems to be stuck to the spoon and I'm not sure about the world's tiniest little teacup there to my right. And it looks like there's a maybe a lime laying there that I've been chewing on. I don't know. Let's see how I'm doing in the mountains up here. All right, fair enough. That's probably about how happy I would look, especially since uh, my ears are probably frozen by 
by now. The second variation of that one, that's a plausible likeness of me. Not sure why my thumb's sticking out of that glove, but those minor details would be easy enough to fix with a little editing. Now the very first generation with my Bob character, this was the first and this was the second iteration. I wasn't in love with this first iteration, but the second one, I thought it did a pretty good job. I noticed that the character description that the AI came up with for me included having short black hair and wearing a blue button-up shirt. And I didn't want that blue button-up shirt to be a feature in every image that I generated. So over in my character description, I took out that blue shirt, I changed the hair from black to brown, and I added clear framed eyeglasses because those are the features I want to be consistent with, not so much the blue button-up shirt. Here's the Bob character waving that little default prompt that it gives us. Here's what it generated with that default prompt of looking out the rainy window. Now for this one, I was experimenting with that character description prompt. And at that point I hadn't added in the description of the glasses, but the best part about this one is this second iteration where, okay, that kind of looks like me, but the reflection in the window is not me. And if that ever happens in real life where I'm looking out a window and the reflection looking back is someone totally different, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Now, if you're thinking my first generation is looking a little fuzzy, well, I use Designs Enhance and fix that right up. Nice and clear, plenty of detail. Then I'm out for a motorcycle ride. Both of those seem to capture me pretty well. Then here's me in a suit of armor eating a burger in a fast food restaurant. I'm not sure why I have my straw stuck through this gigantic burger. The other variation came out a bit better. Here I am in a lab doing I have no idea what. That one's pretty good, but I really liked the way this one came out with the weird colors floating out of the beakers or whatever they are and the look on my face says something has just gone really bad or really good. And I did a little 80s thing. This one came out okay, but I like this one better and I think it's because of those cool 80s glasses I'm rocking. And if we want to turn any of these images into a video, underneath the generation, select whichever number it is next to AI video. And even though this isn't on my canvas, it's not what I'm seeing on the canvas, I selected the two underneath AI video in this generation. That's the image that's showing up here as my start frame. Design offers a number of video models, Kling 1.6, Standard & Pro, 2.0, Pixverse, Minimax, LumaRay, and more. And here's the video of me in a suit of armor eating the big burger. The guy in the background there, he did not want to be on camera. I guess that's why he's putting that menu or whatever up, hiding his face. Let's go to a different project here. I just have the only thing in this project is this one image of this woman walking on the sidewalk. And let's say I wanted to add a character to this image. I can come over on the left and click character and then insert character. Now I need to mark where I want to place the character in this image. Lasso is selected by default. You just sort of circle a spot. That's probably a bad spot, so I'm going to clear that. You can also use the brush. I'm a little better with the brush, I think. We'll just draw in about where we want this character to be and maybe roughly the shape of what that character would look like. Something like that ought to work. Then we click choose a character. I'll pick Bob walking next to the woman. And we'll click generate. So it gives us four variations. There's the first one, the second one, the third, and the fourth. Not crazy about that one at all. I got a weird spot in my head and the side profile just isn't doing it for me. But the other three where I'm facing forward, they came out just fine. So that's my walkthrough of consistent characters in design. My name is Bob. I hope you found this helpful or at least entertaining. And I hope you'll come back and see me in another video.